Okay, welcome to our uh, resistance tutorial. Um, right, what we're going to be teaching you here is how to draw resistance lines and how to trade them. Um, on this example, uh, again, each of these black bars represents one day of price movement. Um, so it starts off, it goes up, um, you have a bar, you see where the, the first bar touches the, sorry, not the first bar, but the first touch of that red line. Um, on that day it hits a certain point and then the next couple of days it comes down you now know that is a resistance point it's a point where the buyers couldn't really push the price any higher um, so selling pretty much dominated uh, the trading activity at that point so the price comes downwards to find buyers again and um, what it does is it comes down um, and then goes back up now when it hit the high of that first touch of the red line a trader would notice that. It'd make note of that and he'd draw a line across uh, as we've done, extend it across and uh, the next time it touches that line, if you want to sell shares, that's not a bad time to sell because it's had, it's had a previous, it's got a history of being um, a resistance point. It was a point in which buying was outweighing, uh, sorry, selling was outweighing the buying. So there's a good chance that if we get to that price again, i.e. the price comes up to that red line, there's a good chance that history will repeat itself and selling will outweigh the buy. See, I got it right that time. I didn't say buying outweigh and selling. So, uh, yeah, anyway, right. So, if you was, if you look at the last bar that we've drawn on this picture, if you held shares in this company, where would be a good time for you to sell if you were looking to sell? Now, what really, there's a lot of factors and every, every uh, situation is different. It's never particularly easy. But if you wanted to sell, wouldn't it be a good thing just to see if it actually touched that red line again? And if it did touch that red line, dump the lot. Take your profits and get out. And that's what resistance is, is all about. So here we go. Um, this is an artificial example, but it happens quite often on the stock market. You see this quite a lot. Um, so the price did rally up to that red line. Um, and then the price dumped afterwards. The price dumped because it's it's the perfect way to sell your shares. If you if you're looking for an exit or somewhere to take your profit, that's where it'd be. Um, as we say on here, you'd be amazed at how many people do the opposite and actually buy because the price has gone up. They think it's a you know oh this share's been going up. It's a safe share to buy. No 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 no. Don't just just don't. Um, but the the all in a nutshell basically resistance points are ideal places to sell your shares um, and that's why they're so important so let's let's go on okay so this is a slightly more um, advanced uh, tutorial for the um, resistance line so if you look at the fourth bar um, it's quite a long bar and it touches a point and then the market backs away so what we can do is draw a horizontal line across um, which we've just said in the last bit. Um, only on this example, you know we said that nothing's clear cut, there's no black and white on the stock market, it, it's not well, you know, there, there's lots of factors that come into play. Um, on this example, um, actually selling is, wasn't as dominant as it was last time and the market wants to go higher, buyers are more enthusiastic and they're willing to pay a higher price and it actually smashes through that uh, horizontal line. So this can happen quite a lot. So what we do then as a trader is we wait to see where the next resistance point is. We, we make a higher high and we wait, because what will happen in an uptrend, it will keep making high highs, but we wait for that highest high. So when the market puts in a high and then backs away, that is a resistance point. And in this example, um, we've actually circled uh, in, is that brown? I think it's brown, um, the highest high of that little rally. And what we can do now is we can draw a red line, ascending line, connecting both of them high points, um, which we've done, because that could potentially be a resistance point, but we, we won't know if that's for sure until uh, we get another touch. So the market then rallies again, um, and then what happens is it puts in another high at that uh, red line, because that would be our selling point, because if we're thinking this red line is our resistance line, 
if it touches that again and we want to sell shares that would be a good point to sell and I think that's the reason why resistances work because people were thinking right I've got some profit now I want to I want to seal my profit by selling the shares where's the highest point so you don't really want to be selling your shares and then watching the share price go up and up and up after and think or oh, I could have made a few uh, hundred quid more so you want to be trying to sell as high as you can and that's why we use resistance lines so here we go, reiterating uh, what we just said. Um, we touched on this on our support line uh, tutorial. It takes two points um, to draw a line and a third point to uh, confirm it. So really we need three touches of a line to say yes, that is actually a valid uh, resistance line. Um, the second, uh, what we what we just touched on the second touch of that red resistance line what we can also do is draw a horizontal line across because there is an element of guessing where the uh, resistance is going to be and realistically we might not have got a touch of that ascending a, a third touch of that a uh, ascending resistance line because what might have happened um, the, when you look at the bar that touched it the second time um, we've drawn a red line across the price might have rallied down, uh, gone downwards and not been able to get above that red horizontal line. Then that would have been resistance. So there is an element of guessing, but the moral of the story is again, um, once we got above that little horizontal line, both horizontal lines, we've, we've drawn two on here, we've gotten above two. If you want to take your profit, you're looking for a potential resistance. You don't want the market to go up to a what you think is a resistance point and then back away a good 10% and think oh actually I should have sold there but it's a bit too late now that's why you need to sort of have an element of guessing you need to be really um, receptive to what's going on where the highs are in the market and where it's backing away from draw lines not all of them will be valid resistances but if you're looking to get out and sell um, you need to be paying attention to where these uh, resistance points can be before they become really obvious. Because um, once they're really obvious, other traders have already sold and made the price come down. So you might have guessed already the answer to this question, but why does a resistance act as a resistance? Um, why does, over and over again, the stock market rally to a certain point uh, or a certain resistance line and then back away? Um, well, the, I mean, if you look at this example again, the first touch of that um, red line, that just happened to be the price where the sellers overpowered the buyers. So perhaps it went on quite a long run. There was some, you know, big traders that got in near the bottom. And now they're, they're taking their profit. Um, that was the price they chose to do it at. There was quite a big back away. Um, new buyers would have come in at the lower prices. Um, by the time it goes back upwards, uh, towards that red line, they're thinking of selling. Um, some of them might not care if it goes above that red line. They think, right, I'll take my chances. Let's sell at the red line, um, and then um, because of that, that selling activity, um, perhaps the uh, the share price starts showing some weakness, looking like it doesn't want to go much higher than that red line, which makes more sellers come in and think, oh, I'll take my profit now rather than risk it. So. It ends up being an, an area where selling dominates buying again, so the price comes down. Um, <clears throat> so in this example, if you look at the last bar, if that started going a bit lower, a bit lower, and then rallied up again, the third touch would absolutely guarantee that uh, resistance. But it would be quite obvious to everyone that it's there. That's the reason why we have to be quite nimble with these sort of things and an element of guessing. Unless you are a very conservative uh, trader, then you would wait until a trend line has been um, confirmed before you uh, trade on it. So you might have guessed already the answer to this question, but why does a resistance act as a resistance? Um, why does, over and over again, the stock market rally to a certain point uh, or a certain resistance line and then back away? Um, well, the, I mean, if you look at this example again, the first touch of that um, red line, that just happened to be the price where the sellers overpowered the buyers. So perhaps it went on quite a long run. There was some, you know, big traders that got in near the bottom. And now they're, they're taking their profit. Um, that was the price they chose to do it at. There was quite a big back away. 
um, new buyers would have come in at, at the lower prices um, by the time it goes back upwards uh, towards that red line they're thinking of selling um, some of them might not care if it goes above that red line they think right I'll take my chances let's sell at the red line um, and then um, because of that, that selling activity um, perhaps the, uh, the share price starts showing some weakness looking like it doesn't want to go much higher than that red line which makes more sellers come in and think oh I'll take my profit now rather than risk it so it ends up being an, an area where selling dominates buying again so the price comes down um, <clears throat> so in this example if you look at the last bar if that started going a bit lower a bit lower and then rallied up again a third touch would absolutely guarantee that uh, resistance but it would be quite obvious to everyone that it's there that's the reason why we have to be quite nimble with these sort of things and an element of guessing unless you are a very conservative uh, trader then you would wait until a trend line has been um, confirmed before you uh, trade on it so in um, a down market we can actually use resistance lines to measure the momentum um, of the downtrend see um, when it's getting faster and when it's actually starting to slow as well and you can use resistance lines to do that um, this is something that we'll go over on uh, private lessons because it's something that um, there's ways of telling when um, a market is is like uh, that's been going down a while when it's showing some sort of weakness um, and actually buyers are starting to come in um, and one of the ways we use these uh, like speed lines um, we can teach you um, but this is just a quick visual to show you that you know you can measure uh, acceleration by various resistance lines right a few more things then so um, in this downtrend you see the uh, descending red line that's had three touches so that is now confirmed as a resistance but on the fourth attempt of touching it it actually breaks through um, this can happen I mean the resistance is is all it pretty much is telling us is it's an area which is likely to be dominated by um, sellers it's not guaranteed um, there will be points where resistances are taken out and the market goes higher so they can get breached but if you want to take profit as we, as we keep saying that is an area to do so um, there is traders uh, and we've done it ourselves where we've watched the resistance um, thinking actually this might break upwards and there's a lot of traders that get caught out buying on resistance lines there's also a lot of traders that get caught out selling on resistance lines because they can break out sometimes they look like they're going to break upwards like break the light break the resistance line and go upwards um, like in this example but they don't so we've got a very good way a very good strategy um, of trading these and uh, we'll share that on our private lessons because there's not enough time to go into it now um, it's, it's quite a high risk trade but the rewards can be very good and the, the way that we trade it is not as high risk as other people uh, trading it we don't get caught out very often making this trade when we do trade this sort of uh, breakout we normally always make a profit because of the way we do it but uh, we'll go through that on um, private lessons etc right a few little points for you to read through some of them are quite important um, the point on previous resistance points um, if you actually look at the uh, long term chart for the S&P 500 if you look at when the stock market crashed in 2000 because of the dot com bubble bursting the crash in 2008 um, was at exactly the same resistance point so the high of the market before it crashed was at the same point it crashed in 2000 that is basic charting that we've gone over in this tutorial um, once a resistance line is beaten i.e. the price gets above it um, it then becomes a support so that's something that we haven't touched on yet um, but um, that's more important when you're trading a breakout if the price gets above a resistance and comes back down to back test that is a good buying opportunity but um, anyway have a quick flick through this and uh, happy trading I hope you learned something today